work on a unique topic, and that is fatherhood. Fatherhood. So even uh, down there, uh, Pastor Kibera is uh, ministering on the same, and we are going to, today is kind of an introduction, so that we can be able to pick it from there. And uh, 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 even as I give the, the definition, uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, to outline that uh, the definition, I have borrowed it from uh, the book of uh, Bishop Mark Karyuki uh, on the ministry, uh, mystery of fatherhood. So it's not my introduction, but I know uh, I've picked it and I know it's a blessing to us. So I'll begin with the definition <coughs> of fatherhood, and I know that uh, God is going to bless us. But even as I continue, uh, I'd like also to inform you that by the grace of God, I'm a father of four sons. So even as I minister here, I'm a father. And I uh, have also been fathered. <laughs> I've had my father, though, he's a wrestler, but I've had uh, many fathers in my life. And by the gr grace of God, I have the spiritual father, who is Bishop Jimmy. Na, na Jua Tanyini, he's still your spiritual father, and he has been a blessing to each one of us. We are the people we are today because he has continued to shape us. So the first definition, I'll have two definitions. The first one is uh, fatherhood is a combination of the character and authority, a combination of the character and authority that flows supernaturally from the father into the science. And I would like just to give a caveat to Skyskia that you are ready and maybe the, 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 when you hear science at Unajitoa Hapo. The scripture in Romans 8 uh, verse 14 says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So muko hapo ndani. So so I've said the first definition, combination of the character and authority that flows supernaturally from the father into the sons. And the other definition is that fatherhood is a process. is a process of being imparted with a set of values and virtues. A process of being imparted with a set of values and virtues as well as ethics and, uh, and ethicacies. So, uh, so those are the two def definitions. And uh, uh, in the introduction, I also say that a father plays a critical role in the process of molding and shaping the character of a, of a son. This is what makes it essential for every son to have a father. So it's important for every son to have a father. And here we have say, I've said we have the spiritual father who is a bishop. And uh, we know even in our different homes, wherever we, are, we, are, we have come from, we have fathers. Some of them are biological fathers. Others are stepfathers. Others are foster fathers. They have taken part in making us to be the people that we are, uh, we are all today. But fatherhood is a mystery. It's a mystery because the father carries blessings and curses. It's a mystery because a father carries blessings and curses. And can systematically release either, either a curse or a, or, or a blessing or both at the same time. And that we know from the, uh, the story of uh, Jacob, even as Israel, as he was blessing his son. There are some of them that he blessed, but some of them he also, he also uh, cast. But what is clear, though, is that nothing flows out of the father automatically. So nothing flows from the father automatically. Whatever that the father carries, be it uh, the, uh, the blessings or the curses, can only be released after being provoked. So we have said uh, uh, father carries both, of, both, both the, the two things. He carries the blessings and also the curses. But, but either of those can only be released after being uh, provoked. The father's spirit must be stirred up for the release. He must be stirred up for the release. And in the scripture we know uh, uh, how, how uh, Isaac, Isaac uh, called Esau. And he told him, go and, uh, uh, to the game and, and get, a, get, a she, uh, uh, get one of the animals, come and cook for me, and then I'm going to bless you. You can only receive from the father that which befits your provocation. So maybe our eyes, wherever we are today, it's because of the provocation that we have been able to provoke. Some of us uh, uh, we have, uh, has, have provoked blessings. Others have provoked some curses, and that's why maybe their lives are not moving the right way. 
and sometimes curses, they don't need to be just spoken, but uh, 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 maybe there are things, uh, they come from even from disobedience. Because as you are going to see, uh, uh, the scripture reminds us that we need to honor our parents. And I know of a very close uh, uh, family member uh, who most of the time the parent, the father was always uh, telling him something, but he could like always to be very argumentative, he could always argue. And he was seeing as if uh, the father, Nikamo Arikayake. So even when the father tells him something, he would almost uh, try to object uh, uh, everything about it. But the father could just keep quiet. But when I look at his life, I can see Naonanga Maishayake Ikona Kasoro. So that is some of the things because of walking in this, in this honor. So honor is very important. Uh, uh, for, for, for even, uh, even as we walk. So there are three types of fathers. Three types of fathers. I've said today's introduction. And the first one is our heavenly father. Our heavenly father is number one. And for this we do not need introduction, but I'll quote very quickly. A scripture in Psalms 68 verse 5, 60, uh, Psalm 68 verse 5 says, is a, uh, 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 the scripture introduces him as a father of the fatherless, a defender of the windows, is God on his holy habitation. So he introduces himself in the scripture as a father to the fatherless. But another description which Jesus, uh, where we can pick uh, on the aspect of the father at great length, is in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, from verse 6 all the way uh, to almost 18. But for now, I'm going to read very few scriptures, and we are going to get something out of it. Uh, so fr from verse 6, it says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is, the, who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in the secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain uh, repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that you, you, need, uh, you need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then verse 14 and 15, it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So in that scripture from uh, Matthew chapter 6 from verse 6, and the name Father, and it's the Father in capital letter, it is repeated, uh, re repeated in, in several times. And in your own time, you can refer from John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 7 to 21, I'm not going to, to read, but uh, uh, the head that is in the, in the Bible is the Father revealed. And uh, that is Jesus when he was talking about the Father to the disciples. So our heavenly Father, we need to know that our heavenly Father is perfect in everything that he does. He's not limited in any way. And our Father is able to bring order even in our lives. So where there is, no, uh, there is any form of disorder, he's able to bring order in our lives. So he's a good Father. He's not limited like our other fathers. That is the beauty of our God. So the, Lord of our, of our, the role of our other fathers originated with God himself, our heavenly Father, and is, is a divine role and calling. And even God, when he was speaking to the Israelites, in, in numerous times, he could introduce himself as, uh, like the way he introduced to Moses in Exodus 3, verse 6. That moreover, he said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of, of Jacob. So uh, that, that is our God, our heavenly father. That is the first father, our heavenly father. But when it comes to our heavenly father, the father is in capital F. Uh, B we have the biological fathers, but you can also call them other fathers. Uh, biological uh, uh, fathers, but other in quotes, fathers. So when we talk about biological fathers, this is a form of fatherhood that is derived from the natural biological role of reproduction. This is, a, this is the man who sires a child and whose genes the child bears in his system or his DNA. But uh, we find that Sometimes we have cases where we have fathers who have been able to serve their children and they are there, they are present in their lives. So we are going to see that we, uh, uh, the biological or other fathers, we have three set of fathers. 
The first ones, they are present fathers. Present fathers. So these are fathers who are present in the lives of their children. So who instill values and virtues. So they take responsibility of providing fatherhood to the, children or, uh, to, to the child or the children. So those are the present fathers. But again, in, uh, in, uh, in very unfortunate uh, instances, we find fathers who sire children and then disappear and are not present to raise their children. They never take responsibility of providing fatherhood to their offspring. So these are called absent fathers. Absent fathers. Children who are brought up, without, uh, uh, brought up with missing fathers will always rack in this very crucial impartation. Because fatherhood uh, is usually passed on through impartation. On the other hand, we have the third category. We have the, people, uh, 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 the ones who are called unfathered fathers. Unfathered fathers. So the principle is that you cannot give what you do not have. So what this means is, in essence is that men who have not been fathers, fathered find it naturally difficult to provide fatherhood. We have said that fatherhood is usually shared through impartation. Becoming a father, a stepfather, a grandfather or a foster father is an opportunity to become like God. To love and care for the children as God loves and cares for us. So it's a great responsibility that fathers have been given. That they, uh, they can be able to pass, uh, uh, to instill values and virtues in the lives of their children. And the third category is the spiritual fathers. Spiritual fathers. Spiritual fathers are derived from God's spiritual rule. A lot of things begin to happen in your life from the point where you get connected to a spiritual father. Many people have survived through life without having biological fathers. So today, if you have a, a, a biological father, thank God and value that, uh, that, that father. Some of us, we had fathers, but today uh, 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 they, they, they are gone. We, they are not there. So count it not a right, but a privilege that you have a father. Many people have survived through life without having biological fathers. However, it's worth noting that no one can make any, heavy, uh, any, any headway in life without a spiritual father. What happens is that a spiritual father connects you with God's heavenly realities. He connects you to God's heavenly realities. And for those of us who have been privileged to, uh, to, be, to, uh, uh, to have uh, our bishop uh, uh, as our spiritual father, we can attest and look back and see that he has molded us. Sometimes even some of the things we do, tunapata tunivira tuliona baba yetu wakifanya. Awa tujakua influence. Si tumekua influence. Knowing real or unknowing real. Unapata sometimes, uh, you do like he does. A spiritual father nurtures in the things of God. He also mentors you in the concept of accountability. Uh, concept of accountability whose benefit is impartation and spiritual covering. So you may not, even where you are, you may not see our bishop, but one thing that we need to know that he provides us spiritual cover. Yes, he provides impartation in our lives, but also he also provides spiritual covering. That even when he is there and is praying for us, praying for his congregation, uh, praying for his readers, know that you are, you are part, uh, you, you are, he considers you. So it's, it's however important to appreciate that fatherhood impartation can only flow from an environment of relationship and association. So it can only flow, uh, 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 fatherhood impartation can only flow through the environment of relationship and impartation. There must be the fulfillment of the Messiah's foretold work of turning the hearts of fathers to the children and the hearts of children to their fathers. That is uh, according to the scripture uh, in, in, in Marachi uh, 4, verse 6. So there, there, there must be fulfillment of the Messiah's foretold work of turning the hearts of fathers to the children and the hearts of children to their fathers. 
But let's see uh, briefly what the, the Bible uh, says about fathers. What the Bible says about fathers. And the first scripture we are going to see is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. And the scripture says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, and that and you may live wrong on earth. So that honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live wrong on earth. And the same, uh, uh, th that scripture borrows from two other scriptures, that is Exodus 20 verse 12, Exodus 20, verse 12, uh, and Deuteronomy 5, verse 16. And then we move to the next verse, verse 4. Uh, it says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. This is, uh, the scripture is addressing the fathers. That fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up in the, dis in the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord, uh, uh, that, that uh, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. The other scripture is First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter two, verse eleven to twelve. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse eleven to twelve. It says, "For you know that we dealt with you, each of you, as a father deals with his own children." Uh, this is Paul talking to the the the, uh, the Thessalonike. And uh, he's saying that in verse 12, encourage, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live rise worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. So here Paul is articulating the three things that fathers do. That, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, he's, he's saying, each of you, as uh, we dealt with you, fa as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live rise worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Praise the name of Jesus. And the other scripture, we are about to conclude that area, is just to know that uh, the aspect of fatherhood, and then we will, be done, we will be moving to the final stage. That is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. And the scripture here is saying that, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. And uh, uh, note, the, even in Ephesians, we have seen the aspect of the instruction, that discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And here in Proverbs 1, 8, it says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. So here we can see a distinction. There is emphasis about the that, uh, that, that the father instructs his children. And we are going to see that in Scripture it's repeated severally. And the final area, because uh, we are trying to see what does the Bible uh, say about fathers, that is Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4, verse 1 to 4, and then verse 10 to 11. Proverbs 4, verse 1 to 4, and then verse 10 to 11. Uh, the scripture says, Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. To a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. So when you pay attention to the father's uh, uh, instruction, then you get understanding. I give you solid running. So the instruction that the father gives is solid running. So that you do not forsake my teaching. For I too was a son to my father. And that's why when I was introducing myself, I've said, yes, I, I, I'm a father of four sons. But I have also been, uh, I've also been a son to my father. <clears throat> that, uh, for I was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and he said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart, not with some of your heart, uh, part of your heart, but with all of your heart, all of your heart. Keep my commands. So his instructions, they are here equated to commands, whereby you are not expected to argue about them. You are just expected to just uh, uh, obey the instructions. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I instruct, verse 11, I instruct you in the way of wisdom and read you along straight paths. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and I read you along straight paths. So it's important here we see, we see the emphasis of the word 
instruct. But here we have seen that, yes, as children, we are expected to honor our parents. And the scripture says that, uh, that what we have seen in Ephesians 2, that is a commandment with a promise that it may go well with us and that we may live wrong life on earth. But again, fathers have also been warned not to provoke their children by the way they treat them. So it's important that we run to listen to the instructions that we receive from our fathers. So they are there. They give our fathers, give us feathers to fry. They give us feathers to fry. <clears throat> and on the um, area number four, which I'll be concluding with, I've said today we are just, uh, uh, is an introduction, is on qualities of a good father. Qualities of a good father. Uh, the, uh, the, the first quality of a father is that a father is a source. Is a source. And uh, as a source, uh, it's twofold. One, he's a provider. And when we talk about provider, he's a, he's, he provides the families uh, that family needs are addressed across board. It's not just about just food and housing, but the needs of the family. So he's a, a father is supposed to be a provider as well as imparting values and virtues. So there are twofold. The first one is that providing as a provider, but the other one is also imparting values and virtues. In 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, the scripture says, anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Hmm? That if we are not able to provide for our children, that we are worse, uh, 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 that we have denied the faith, the faith, and we are worse than the unbeliever. The, un the unbeliever. And on the issue of imp imparting values and virtues, we can look at Deuteronomy chapter six, verse six and nine. And here the scripture, uh, this Moses who was speaking to the children of Israel, that these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you ride down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hearts and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So here the Israelites were being reminded that they needed to be very deliberate. So when you're imparting values and virtues, so you have to be very deliberate in doing so. So it does not come, uh, uh, so it's work you have to do. And you have to repeat. And I like what Mom Pastor Harris always reminds us, that repetition uh, uh, br brings about retention. So when it's repeated, then someone is able to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, get, to, hold, to get hold of it. Uh, so the first, so qualities of a good father, the first one is a source. We are seen as a provider and also instill, instilling values, va, uh, va, values and virtues. These are both uh, the worldly on how to survive here on earth and also spiritual ones. And B is security, security. Uh, the father is expected to be the priest and the prophet of his household. The prophet, the priest and the prophet of his household. And we, ha we see a very good example in First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 18. Uh, is, is verse, I think it's verse 19. And he, uh, here, yeah, it's, uh, the scripture says, and uh, this is uh, David who was praying, uh, and, and this was his prayer. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, statutes, and decrees, and to do everything to build the perpetual structure for which I have provided. Here we see that David prayed for his son Solomon. And children who know that without any doubt that their fathers pray for them every day have a deep sense of love and security. And uh, there are things that I have deliberately, for example, myself done. Uh, sometimes even when uh, our children come from, uh, from school, we pray together, like now, uh, uh, tomorrow I know Titus will be coming from Govio. So we come, we thank God that he has come. When he's going, we also sit down, discuss, but I also, we also pray and I also release them with, with a blessing. 
So that is something that I have consistently done. So even there are times that we sit down, look at the faithfulness of God, and I also pray and declare upon their lives. And one of the prayers that I like even declaring upon their lives is Psalms 112, verse 2 and 3. That the children of the upright, they shall be mighty in the land. The generation of the righteous is blessed. So, and I also like also uh, Psalms 25, verse 12, where David, uh, who, who was a man after God's own heart, asked, and who are those that fear the Lord? And David himself responds and says that you instruct them in the way they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity. Their descendants will inherit the land. So there are, there are choices that we usually make. And those choices that we make, they have generational impact. And uh, uh, in, in fact, you, when you look at the scripture in Exodus chapter 20, verse, five, verse 4 and 5, uh, where God was giving the commandment, uh, he, told, he, told, he, told the, he told them not, he told the Israelites that they should not worship any other god because he's a jealousy god. Punishing uh, them that, that, that uh, hate him and do not obey him to the third and fourth generation. But I like the NIV version of verse 5. I think verse 5 or 6 there it says, but them that love, love and obey him, they will be blessed to a thousand generation. Hmm? To a thousand generation. So that's what uh, the word of God uh, declares. So, uh, so a good father provides spiritual cover for his household. So we have seen, yes, a spiritual father will provide the spiritual cover. But a, a, a father, as a priest as, and as a prophet, is supposed also to provide spiritual cover for his household. See is that, or, or number three, uh, a good father is also a protector. A protector. So here, we are talking about the, the physical cover from any physical harm. Kama mimi kwangu ni unafungaga mirango, ni unahakikisha kukoseti. Na ata huwa naniambia kama siko, wanafungaga mirango mapema. And I think it happens in most homes, yeah? So, because I am there also to ensure that I provide sec physical security from any physical harm. So, as a protector, they protect you also through instructions. Remember, especially what we saw from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, and verse 10 to 11, about the aspect of instruction. Because through instructions, you instill values and virtues. And uh, by so doing, your, your, your children, there are some choices that they make that protect them from getting into, into danger or, or into wrong companies. And right now, my elder son, Humphrey, uh, who is in the U.S., uh, uh, and we have, we, sometimes we talk and he, he, he tells me some of the families member there, they have issues and all that. And I have, I have, told, I have always sometimes told him, they, are, they are, choose the battles to fight. So even sometimes now he talks to me and he tells me, ah, daddy, hiyo, ayo, niliacha, niliacha, niliacha tuwa onge, nika sema, that is not a battle worthy my fight. Because I have been able to instill that in his life. And I'm about to conclude. So that is a protector. And D, because they are just five, eh, is he inspires hope and encourage, encouragement. Inspires hope and encouragement. Fathers never give up on their children. Or a good father, we are talking about a good fathers never give up uh, on, on their, their children. And the story of the uh, prodigal son in Rook, which is usually based in Rook 15, verse 20 to 24, is the story of a father who never gives up hope and is ready to receive his son child back with open arms. We can, dis we can discipline, we can hold accountable, but we must never give up. So even to tonight, Maybe you have children, and maybe they are on their, uh, they, they, they're not, not on, the, on the right path. But the worst thing you can do is giving up on them. So remember, continue rem uh, remembering them. Remember, Bishop always reminds us to do two things. Uh, tokoroje, to talk to them, and neology. So it's important that we also continue to do that. Never give up on them. Just like God, the, our Father never gives up on us, it's the same case that we should also not give up. And uh, still on that point, that fathers affirms us. Good fathers affirms us. And we see the example of Jesus after being baptized. 
in Matthew chapter uh, 3, verse 16 to 17. And the scripture says that as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up to, out of the water. At, at the moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. So every son must have a father's approval or, or of affirmation. So uh, many people sometimes who, for, for example, have been so much battered and have been, uh, have been having inner wounds, there are those people who maybe wrong words were spoken by their fathers. Uh, so those ones, they crush them. So, uh, so a father should be there to inspire hope and encouragement. And in that point, as we conclude, there is Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. It says, fathers, do not embitter your children. Colossians 3, 21. Fathers, do not embitter on your children. Don't make them bitter, your children, or they will become discouraged. So we should be there to encourage, but not to discourage. And the final point. Uh, good fathers are good examples or good role models. Good examples or role models. Scripture teaches that who, uh, that who we are and how we live is like a letter from God. Our children read that letter every day. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 to 2, uh, 2 to 3, uh, the scripture says that you yourself are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You should show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. So you are a letter. Every day you write a letter, and your children read it. So are they reading the right letter from you? And uh, the scripture in James chapter 1, verse 2, it reminds us that you should not be listeners to the word of God, but we should be, uh, uh, because if we, we are only mere uh, listeners of the word, we deceive ourselves. So we need to do what the word of God says. Remember, you cannot give what you do not have. Children are not good at listening to advice, but they are very good imitators. And me, I have seen, I've told you I'm a father of sons. Watoto wakikuwa kuwa kidogo, vile ire kiti nakaa, ninge mpata anakaa, vile dadi anakaa, anka ire kiti anakaa. Sazi ngine na mpata anabaa, vya tuzangu, anatembea. Eh? So, you have a great influence in their life. As I conclude, remember, you didn't just appear. By the grace of God, you have a spiritual father, no, a biological father. You have may, either maybe a stepfather or even a foster father. But as well, you have also a, a, a spiritual father to connect or bring you to your prophetic destination in God. So our role is to honor them. Because we say that, as we began, we said that fatherhood is a mystery. So it has both blessings and curses. And it can be able to, uh, to give either of them or both of them. But it requires provocation. So for us, let's provoke, uh, by, by honor, let's provoke blessing to the honor of God. So let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your word. And tonight, Jehovah God, I lift your people to you, that Heavenly Father, Lord, even as they have heard, Lord, your word, that, Lord, they will examine their lives, King of glory. And, Lord, where they have erred, Jehovah God, Lord, you are God who brings order, Lord, in our lives, Jehovah God. You guide them, Lord, on what to do, King of glory. But above all, help us, King of glory, to continue to honor, Lord, our parents, that, Lord, you have promised, Lord, in your word, that it's a commandment with a promise that it may go well with us and that we may have long life on this world. Be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.